Grand Via, described by American novelist Ernest Hemingway as a mix between Broadway and New York's Fifth Avenue. It's Madrid and indeed Spain's best known street for retail and the performing arts, shops, theatres, restaurants, cinemas, bookshops, cafes and pubs. You name it, you'll find it. Now, even if you've never been to Madrid and you've no idea what Gran Vía actually looks like, you can probably tell that I'm not actually doing this video from Gran Vía. I'm in fact doing it from the comfort of my own balcony. I was down at Gran Vía a little bit earlier, but it looked like it was going to start chucking it down and it was blowing an absolute gale and I didn't want Donald Trump's dead cat on my head, so I thought it'd be safer to do it from here. Now, Gran Vía is one of these places that's basically always busy. If you're susceptible to bouts of people rage, then I wouldn't say avoid it, but I would say pick your moment carefully. But yeah, it's it's quite incredible. If you go along at four or five o'clock in the morning, particularly in the summer, and it's actually busier than a lot of cities I've been to are at three o'clock in the afternoon. So way back at the start of the 20th century, the central area of the city around Gran Vía was actually in pretty poor shape. So in April 1910, they decided that Gran Vía was going to be one of 50 streets to be modernised. Now, it was initially made up of three different avenues which were redeveloped in different stages and joined together as one in 1955. The street actually had a few different names over the years, but it was always referred to as Gran Vía by the locals, Gran Vía being Great Way, bit of a rubbish name in English. But in 1982, during La Transición, the name given to the period of time uh, in which the transition to democracy took place after the Franco dictatorship came to an end, the street was officially named Gran Vía. The first section runs from the junction with Calle Alcalá, which is close to La Fuente de Cibeles, the Cibeles fountain that I mentioned in the video that I did about the museums, all the way up the hill to La Red de San Luis, which you will get to when you see the McDonald's on your left hand side. Now that was the first part of the street to be redeveloped, that took place between 1910 and 1917 and for my money that's where you'll find the most impressive architecture. A lot of people mistakenly think that the Metropolis building is the start of Gran Vía but although that was redeveloped at the same time as the buildings next to it, it's not actually on Gran Vía, it's actually on Calle Alcalá. So the building next to that which is called Edificio Grassi, the Grassi building, is actually the start of Gran Vía, that's Gran Vía number one. The middle section runs from La Red de San Luis all the way along to La Plaza de Callao. This was redone immediately after the first section, so between 1917 and 1921. So that's the flat part of the street is dominated by the Telefonica building, which is based on a New York style skyscraper. Um, and it's by far the busiest part of the street. There are loads and loads of shops. You've got two H&Ms because one's just not enough. You've got Zara or Zara as we call it in English and you've got the second biggest Primark in the world, which opened just a couple of years ago, and it's in a really beautiful building, which is a bit of a waste, if you ask me. So La Red de San Luis, slap bang in the middle of the city centre, is also notable for the fact that you'll often find some ladies of the night, shall we say, hanging around outside the McDonald's. Now, this is a family-friendly vlog, so you can make your own jokes about that, but all I'll say is they're definitely not backwards in coming forwards. The third and final section of the street runs from La Plaza de Callao all the way down the hill on the other side to La Plaza de España. The redevelopment started in 1926 but wasn't finished until midway through the 20th century as a result of the Spanish Civil War. Now it starts with the Carrion building which is like Carrion with a Spanish accent, a building which is also called the Capitol building, Capitol being the name of the cinema which is housed in the lower floors. So on this part of the street there are a number of cinemas and theatres, one of which has put on a production of The Lion King since 2011. Now even though it's been sold out every single night for the last six years, I really refuse to believe that there's anybody in Madrid who wants to see The Lion King who hasn't actually seen it yet. Now of course a team on tour video wouldn't be a team on tour video without a bit of football chat. Atletico and Real Madrid have both got club shops on Gran Vía, although I can tell you they are not cheap. You'll be paying up to 120 euros to buy a short-sleeved adult replica shirt. Oof. There are some pretty cool things in both shops though, although maybe not necessarily things you would actually buy. The Real Madrid store has got a replica of the Champions League trophy. It's also got the seats that you would find in the dugout in the Bernabeu. 
although I wasn't able to get a video there because it was being hogged by a family of about 20 when they headed along. Along the road in the Atletico store meanwhile and you'll find the Legends wall which contains pictures of legendary players both past and present. I thought that was quite a nice touch. As you can imagine you can also find some pretty weird and wonderful stuff in both shops which is not at all surprising considering that Florentino Perez would probably sell his own granny if he could. Both teams have got their own board games, so you can get Real Madrid Monopoly and Atletico Madrid Snakes and Ladders. Real Madrid store has got its own line of toiletries and aftershave, which surely can't be any good. I think Sergio Ramos must wear loads of that, and that's why nobody's standing anywhere near him at corners. And something that caught my eye in the Atletico Madrid store was the alarm clock, which seemingly plays the club hymn. So what better way to wake up in the morning than that? Anyway, it's a little bit chilly, so I'm heading inside to have a spot of Real Madrid tea with some Atletico Madrid milk. I'll see you all again soon. If you've liked what you've seen, please remember to like, comment and share on social media. You can find the team on tour on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. But don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll find all of the team on tour's vlog entries. Thanks for watching.